Glenn Beck and Bill O'Reilly is not more patriotic than Benjamin Franklin. And we can see Benjamin Franklin's more in-depth, more in-depth welcoming of Islam. When there was a group of um, frontiersmen, they had actually attacked a group of free men, Indians, Native Americans, and they had very, very barbarically and, and, and in a very inhumane way had, had actually killed and maimed Native American Indians. It is written of Benjamin Franklin that he says that those Native American Indians would have probably been safer under a Muslim uh, leader or under a, in a Muslim country because they were free men. The Indians that were killed and massacred by the frontiersmen in America, they were free men. In Islam, even if you're a prisoner of war, and the tradition of Muhammad, we see him being extremely humane and compassionate towards even his enemies, his ruthless enemies, who kill his companion, who kill his people. But when they became prisoners, they were treated like human beings. They were fed, they were clothed, they were given shelters just like the Muslims. And he said that I would have seen those Native American Indians safer in a Muslim country under Islam. This is how the founding fathers perceived Islam. This is how they, they welcomed Islam. This is how they greeted Islam. And today, I, I can't help but wonder how Thomas Jefferson would react and how Benjamin Franklin, the first American, and Thomas Jefferson, the author of the Declaration of, of Independence, would react to the Islamophobia and the hate and the, the intolerance that is taking place in this country in 2010. I want you to reflect on that. I want you, the audience, to take the time, research this. Don't just take my word for it, no. No, by all means, no. Go and do the research yourself. Look into the history of this nation and into the history of the founding fathers of this nation and you will see their compassion and their welcoming towards Muslims and Islam. George Washington has been quoted to say that in Mount Vernon, which was his place of uh, his homeland, he, he had said that Muslim workers, Muslims, or Mohammedans, again, the reference to Muslims, are more than welcome to Mount Vernon. Are more than welcome to Mount Vernon. This was the first president of America, George Washington, another founding father of this nation, welcoming Muslims. And, and we could see the, uh, the welcoming map that was left in front of, the, of this land, of this nation, being taken away 250 years later. And not only the hatred has is, is, is become so fierce, and it's actually being pushed down the throats of Americans. Americans are not people of, of intolerance, no. I see you as a great people. Americans rising above this. And that's why what, what I want to do and what this, this panel wants to do is to elaborate and to shed light on the realities of this nation, on the realities of the founding fathers of this nation. That we're seeing today that Islamophobia has taken such a height that our first, our first African American president, President Obama, who is a Christian, who says I'm a Christian and there's no problem with that, nor would it have been a problem if he were a Muslim, but he's not. And there's attacks from left and right from all over the country rising and saying, you know what, he looks, he talks, and he is probably a Muslim. But what, what, 
And where are they coming uh, the, towards this conclusion? It's because President Obama, President Obama had the audacity, the courage, the bravery to go to a Muslim nation, to go to a Muslim capital, and to extend the hand of peace, and to extend the hand of, uh, of brotherhood to Muslims. President Obama is much a Muslim as Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson were. President Obama is much a Muslim as the founding fathers of this nation was. The founding fathers welcomed Muslims. The founding fathers welcomed Islam. And if Obama is doing that, he is not doing something out of the ordinary. We wish this is something that is expected from America. And this is something that Americans Tolerance, justice, is something that Americans should ex be expecting from their president. You should not be expecting hate. You should not be expecting intolerance. No, the foundation of this country is not built on hate. The foundation of this country and its reality, it's built on tolerance, it's built on appreciation, it's built on a welcoming man that was left for people of all colors, all ethnicities, all faiths, all backgrounds, because that's the reason why they came here in the first place. That's the reason why they came to the New England, going away from the old England. They came into the New England because they wanted a new life. They, wanted, they, they escaped op oppression. They were escaping persecution. They were es escaping something that was being forced down their throat. And now, we are generating hate. We are generating hate. This is something that I assure you, I assure you this would have angered the founding fathers of this nation. The real Americans and the real, pa real patriarchs of this nation, the founding fathers would be angry with us today, would be upset at the way America is moving today. No. Again, when I look at you, I see a more mature America. I see a more diverse America. I see a more rich America, rich through diversity and through the broad ethnicities and faiths and beliefs that we have. And I need, and, and I ask you, I plead to you, to educate your fellow Americans. Educate your neighbors. Go and do some additional research on the initial stages of the development and the foundation of this country and share it. Share it with your coworkers. Share it with your uh, employees. Share it with your employers. Share it with your uh, colleagues. Share it with your classmates. Share it with your children. Share it with your neighbors. Uh, we are not asking you to become Muslim. That's not what I'm asking here. I'm telling you what type of a what type of a relationship the founding fathers of this nation had towards Islam? That's all I'm saying. Benjamin Franklin not only did he stop on Prophet Muhammad calling him compassionate and just. No, he even went as far as speaking about the 12th century, the 12th century Sultan or the Amir or the leader of the Muslim Empire. Salahuddin Ayyubi saying that this was a man who truly followed the tradition of Muhammad and the tradi tradition of Islam by being compassionate as he was just. He was just and he was compassionate at the same time. This is how the founding fathers viewed Islam. This is how the founding fathers approached Islam and this is how the founding fathers would be expecting of America and Americans to view Islam and view Muslims and view people of all faiths, all backgrounds, all ethnicities. We've seen what hate has done. We need to write new chapters.